Uh, thank you, Abhishek. Thank you for setting the stage for us and uh, just walking us through uh, the evolution of AppSmith. So today I'm going to be uh, talking a little bit about uh, what uh, the future holds for the platform. And for those of you who missed it, uh, I'm Nikhil Nandagopal. Uh, I'm the Chief Product Officer and Founder at AppSmith. Um, so first off, uh, we've had a pretty good year. Um, over 100,000 applications built, um, over 30,000 GitHub stars, and over 5,000 commits to support that. But what's most interesting of all is that we're also seeing widespread adoption inside enterprises, uh, and that's something we are very, very proud of. But honestly, none of this would have been possible without you, the community. The community has always been the bedrock of AppSmith. It's what the open source project is built on top of. And I just wanted to take a minute to acknowledge and thank each and every one of you, whether it's your support in evangelizing the product or helping another community member out or even contributing back to our code base and our GitHub issues. We would not have been able to make it here without each and every one of you, so thank you for that. Now, with this new phase of growth, we also have to evolve because AppSmith as a product was built for developers to build simple CRUD applications and admin panels. But today, as Abhishek touched upon, we're actually seeing large enterprises like GSK and HeyJobs adopt us for mission-critical applications. Right? And along with that, we need to reimagine our roadmap so that we can better support these new emerging use cases. So we're now currently trying to focus on two core things. Building platform capabilities to actually support these new mission-critical use cases, but at the same time also doubling down on our developer experience because we know that enterprises really care about that. And we need to bring in these new capabilities in a developer-first way. And when we think about enterprises, we now understand that these organizations have a plethora of applications to manage. And so they also need the underlying tools to maintain these applications, to drive standardization in the way that these apps are built as well as deployed, and to also accelerate development in a way that ensures that it's also meeting their quality standards. And so with that in mind, I'm really, really excited to announce that we are introducing packages. So packages are a new reusable entity inside AppSmith that are composed of widgets, queries, and JavaScript, which you can easily bundle and distribute across your applications, workspaces, and instances very, very easily. Packages allow you to centralize all of your business logic so that you can easily maintain your applications as well as drive standardization across them. And with no further ado, let me move on to the package demo. So one of the common use cases we see is that users need to build a login form. And in this case, typically, we'd end up seeing that users would end up configuring a lot of JavaScript logic inside this one login button. But as we know, different applications have different login forms, and so that would lead to duplication of logic. In this case, however, we're not using a simple JS object. We're actually using a login module. And that login module is actually defined somewhere else and is going to help us update this. So let's see how that looks. Inside your workspace, we now have access to a new entity called packages that we can easily edit. I have something called the utils package, and the utils package has a login module defined. Inside the login module, you can notice that we have multiple queries. So the JavaScript module is actually talking to a find user by email query that is used to fetch the user based on the email, and then it's matching the user's password and taking a set of instructions, like storing the token, as well as going ahead and updating the user session. All of this logic is now encapsulated inside this JS module. And the great thing about packages also to note is that packages 
are composed of multiple modules. So you can have JavaScript modules, you can have query modules, and you can also have UI modules. Let's go ahead and update this now. So after I log in, I don't just want to display a success message on the screen. I also want to go ahead and navigate to another application. And so as I publish this particular module, and I go back to my application, when I trigger this particular button, we can now see that automatically the business logic was updated inside this application, as well as every single application that uses this module. This makes it a lot easier to maintain our application so that we can encapsulate business logic in a single package or module. So to summarize, packages provide a layer of abstraction on top of the basic entities. So this means that developers can actually create complex workflows and abstract them inside a package so that other consumer developers can accelerate their development quickly. Packages are also upgradable. A single update to a package can be propagated to all instances that consume the package. But we also know that not all updates are desirable, and so packages are versioned. You can actually connect your packages to Git and only deploy the specific versions that you want to upgrade. And last but not least, packages are composable. What this means is that packages can actually reference other packages and so you can create varying levels of abstraction to ensure that you're consistently amplifying your development velocity as they kind of increase. And so packages really enable reusability in a very unique way inside a low-code tool like AppSmith and help you accelerate your development while also ensuring that you can ensure that standardization and maintenance becomes very easy. Now, up till now, AppSmith has been very useful to build UI on top of backend data sources. It allows humans to actually interface with your backend data. But there's been a piece of the puzzle missing for enterprises trying to build mission critical apps. And that is, how do we enable backend systems to actually interface with each other and at the same time, sometimes loop in a human? So with that, we are now beginning to roll out human in the loop workflows. And so workflows is our imagination of how we can enable backend systems to interact with each other, but also bring in humans when required. And this is going to play a very big part of mission critical applications. Now, there are quite a few workflow tools out there, but they all have their own set of limitations. On one end of the spectrum, we have visual-based workflow tools that make it very easy to connect to various data sources but they struggle to have any sort of complex business logic beyond simple ETL. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have tools like AWS Lambda that make it very easy for you to express business logic, but make it very hard for you to integrate with these different SaaS services. And so AppSmith Workflows really tries to take the best of both worlds and create a new approach where you're able to easily integrate with your data sources using the basic forms, but at the same time, when you want to create complex approval logic, you can use JavaScript to express that in a single place. And this makes it very easy for us to express complicated business workflows in a single screen. So that, let's, uh, let's have a look at the workflow demo. Um, so here, as you can see, this is a workflow that we've created, and a common problem we have at AppSmith is that as we're developing new features, a lot of users want access to even in-development features. And so we started a beta program where users can register and ask for access. But of course, we don't want to grant all users access because some of these features are not ready and are not at the level of quality that we would appreciate. And so we need an approval mechanism to approve only the few users who we think make the most sense. And so over here, in this particular workflow, what we're doing is we're integrating with various services, such as Google Sheets, where we are maintaining our beta program, as well as we've created an integration for SMTP so that we can send messages and notifications. 
And in this workflow, a user can register from an application and request access. What the workflow does is it sends me a notification saying somebody wants access to this particular feature, and then it assigns a task to actually request approval for it. If I approve that particular request, then it goes ahead and adds them to the program, as well as notifies them that it has been successful. And so this is an example of a human-in-the-loop workflow that is initiated from a system outside AppSmith. And so over here, um, is there anybody who uh, would like to register for a beta of the workflow feature, in fact? OK, wow. So in the front row, we actually have uh, our own CEO, Abhishek, who doesn't have access to uh, workflows yet. And uh, so I think that's my first uh, port of action is going to be to ensure that he gets access to it. And so Abhishek is going to register for the workflows beta program. And we can see that I'll get a notification from him. Yes, I can see that I have a new registration awaiting approval. And I can see it is from Abhishek as well, right on the spot. So the workflow is actually able to intercept a webhook and then go ahead and make a, sla make a uh, email notification from that. And with this, I can easily also review a pending approval. So Abhishek has requested twice because he's very eager. And I can just go ahead and approve his request. And so with that, Abhishek now has access to our workflow feature with just a few clicks. And so we are able to create very rich, complex workflows with just a few lines of code inside AppSmith. And so once again, the reason AppSmith workflows are so unique is because they are long running. These workflows last forever. And so you can use them to create multi-step, multi-user workflows that span large periods of time. These workflows are also highly customizable. Because you have access to the code underneath the hood, you can actually orchestrate your business logic the way that you see fit. And also, these workflows have approvals built in. So you don't have to worry about managing task assignment, approvals, rejections, um, payloads. All of that is baked into the system and comes out of the box with AppSmith workflows. And last but not least, AppSmith Workflows is not a separate product. It is in a very integrated part of the AppSmith experience, and so it ships with your AppSmith platform. It can be accessed directly from your applications. They can be triggered from any application. You can view approval requests inside applications, and so it is a core native part of the building experience. And so, you know, with bringing workflows in, we've come one step closer to enabling mission-critical applications for enterprise. But when we think about enterprises, they typically shy away from low code because they see it as a system that is unable to sit inside their own software development lifecycle. And one of the key reasons for that, as Abhishek mentioned, is that traditional low code, low code has always used their own proprietary methods of application management, versioning, and deployment, whereas AppSmith has try to use Git so that you can integrate it as a native part of your SDLC. And as we're seeing that more and more enterprises adopt AppSmith because of Git, we're also expanding the support for Git. And so with CI-CD integration, we're making it really easy for every single developer out there to protect your branches, to pin your branches to specific development environments, to ensure that you're able to raise pull requests that get reviewed, and once they get merged, you can ensure that those webhooks automatically deploy your applications. What's more, we also understand that every application doesn't need to be deployed on every commit, and so we're introducing tags and versions so that you can specify which commits you want to actually go live with. And as I said before, enterprises really care about the developer experience. They care about the experience their developers have while building applications because they see it as an integral part of improving their productivity. And so with that, we're also launching support for our custom widget with a native IDE integration so that they can actually edit HTML, CSS, and JavaScript right in the AppSmith editor. 
We're also revamping our ID to support all of these new developments and changes. With the new ID, it's faster than ever to actually edit your applications, build new applications, as well as deploy them very, very quickly. And so let's dive into the IDE demo. So one of the first things we did with our new ID is we introduced a sidebar that separated all of our infrequent actions. We understand that data sources and packages and settings are an integral part of AppSet applications, but they're typically only set once in the lifetime of an application. And so we introduced a sidebar that allowed you to quickly switch between all of these different settings at the click of a button. Along with that, we also went ahead and introduced frequent actions. So we group frequent actions together, such as queries, JavaScript, and widgets, because we understand that when you're building applications, you need to frequently switch between these different entities. And so we made it easier than ever to actually click a single button and go to your queries, or even click a button back and go back to your UI. And so a lot of the time spent in context switching was removed. But that wasn't enough for us. We really wanted to push the bar with this. We wanted to make developers feel like the AppSmith ID was really working for them and even making them faster and faster. And so we thought, how could we reduce context, context switching even further? And with that, we introduced the new split pane that allows you to see both your queries and your UI in a single location. This makes it really convenient for you to update your queries when you might have forgotten a particular query um, or a widget name, you can easily hover over it, notice that it's table user info, and update your query right in place. And the best part is, as soon as you make your updates and changes, you will actually get real-time feedback on the changes you've made in, in a second. And that really accelerates your development speed. So these changes to our ID has been dramatic because we've seen that developers are now actually building applications far, far faster than they were before. And not only that, we also have our custom widget. So the custom widget comes inside the ID, and it comes with an option to edit the source of, a, of the particular widget. We knew that the property pane would not suffice to build a, a whole widget from scratch, and so we added the option to edit source over here. And with the option to edit source, what we can see is that we have the ability to go ahead and write full-fledged code, be it in React, be it in Vue, or be it in Angular, we can bring in these libraries from all over and write widgets from scratch that are now reflected and can then be packaged and reused later. And so with these new additions, we are really pushing the bar on our developer experience and making apps with more customizable and faster for developers at the same time to build their applications. With packages, workflows, Git CI CD, and the new ID, we have no doubt that AppSmith is going to be ready for enterprise-grade applications soon. Um, and that's, uh, that's it for my talk today. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. I hope, <laughs> I hope all that we are building at AppSmith is as exciting to you as it is to us, um, because uh, as a company and as a product, our goal is to make it faster for developers to actually build these applications. Um, and with that, um, as Avishek mentioned, we are heading up to uh, also get to know you all a little bit better over a couple of uh, food and drinks. So I hope all of you will stay back um, and uh, meet with all of us. Thank you. Thank you.